Hello and welcome to another edition of the Book as Artifact at the um, Birmingham and Midland Institute. My name is Samina and I'm the Honorary Librarian. We're often asked what is the oldest book in our collection. I don't know what the oldest book is in our collection but this one is certainly up there. Um, so I thought I would show it to you today. As we've seen before, beautiful marbling on the front, so it would match any of the binding that the owner desired. It would have matched a blue or a red or a green. And the library went for a natural tan, tanned hide. We know that it belonged to the Birmingham Library because it has the Birmingham Library emblem on it, established in 1779, which we were. And this is book number 94 in our collection. So one of the first books that the library owned. And it is a history of Staffordshire. I have to be quite gentle with it because it is very old, as we will see. So, as we've seen before, beautiful end papers. And these end papers are of a thicker paper because they have to support the weight of the book and the weight of the boards. So to, there's a map here which is on linen so that it can be folded and we'll come back to that. So here's the front page. The Natural History of Staffordshire by Robert Plott, Keeper of the Ashmolean Museum and Professor of Chemistry in the University of Oxford. And here is a lady who is presiding over Oxford, Laurel Crown, Oxford University, all very lovely. Oxford, printed at the theatre, anno MDCLXXXV1. Now, one of the first things that you learn as um, a librarian who deals with antiquarian books is how to do Roman numerals. So those of us who know how to do them will know that this date says 1686. So this book is from 1686. So we will be very careful with it. As you'll see, I'm using my bare hands. It's been um, found that skin does less damage to pages than um, gloves if they're, as long as the hands are clean and washed, which mine are. And just in case you didn't believe me, 1686. So, to the most sacred majesty of James II, King of Britain, France and Ireland, defender of the faith, etc. So in those times, it was um, an important um, way of showing your regard for someone to give them or dedicate to them maps or books on topography or something that showed part of what they not owned but had control of because they were the king. So this is the inscription to the king by the writer. And then we have the preface for the reader. And then we have the legend so that we know where to find everything on the map that's folded up at the front. So there has been some damage to this book, as you can see, but then what do you expect when it's quite that old and uh, where it's been um, repaired rather well? Uh, there is the Birmingham Library stamp on to show that we've done it. So it starts off with the natural history, and that's all about the topography, the flora and the fauna, and how rather wonderful Staffordshire is, because that's what he's showing his king. Oops. So, also in this book, there are some rather beautiful drawings. This is a very simple house. And the inscription, the inscriptions are very difficult to read because they're on the fold. To the most generous and most honoured gentleman, um, Mr. Didisper. This is the table showing the northeast front of 
his hall as a pledge of my gratitude for received favours. So I'm assuming that the people whose halls are depicted have been helpful to the author in some way, maybe gave donations. So of the waters, this is all about the, um, wa the waters in Staffordshire. Have another picture. Again, have to be very careful with unfolding the pages. So this is a bit of a ruin there, but rather a nice building at the back. Arable land. Lady milking a cow. Also having its lunch. And this is to the right honourable Edward Lord Ward, Baron of Mingham. Heir apparent of the barony of Dudley, of Dudley Castle. This table being the southeast prospect of the castle, in testimony of his gratitude, is humbly dedicated. So, Dudley Castle, well, who knew? I don't think it looks much like that anymore. It certainly didn't last time I went. So, we'll see if we can find another. I'm sure we can. These margins are so large because it was to um, um, mouse damage was sort of inbuilt into the book. So margins were large to allow for some mousage around the edge. So margins aren't there for you to make notes in. They're actually there to stop the Mises. Well, not to stop the Mises, but to stop the Mises effect on your enjoyment of the book. So, another picture. To the right, worshipful St. Saint, Saint Charles Scrisma. Having difficulty with this um, cursive. His Majesty's High Sheriff of Staffordshire, 1684. This is a table showing the East North East Prospect of Norbury Manor and of Shebon Pool. So this is the manor and this is the pool. Where the Pewits annually breed. Oh, in testimony of his munificence is thankfully dedicated. And here they are. Oh, it's a bit of a shame because there's people coming after them with sticks. Which is a, a little sad. But uh, there you go. Such is life. So, the map at the front, be careful as we close the pages. The map at the front, as I said, is of linen, which made it easier to fold and unfold. But we still have to be incredibly careful with it. And there, a beautiful map of Staffordshire with the coat of arms and all the coat of arms of the great and the good around the edge. So the cities and towns that we have, let's shimmy that a little. We have Stafford in the middle, Cannock, Nitchfield with the three spires on the cathedral, Wolverhampton, um, where else might we know? Drayton, Newport. So it's part of Shropshire over here. And it was, uh, this map was drawn by Joseph Brown in 1682. And he's signed it at the bottom. Oh. There. And the arms of the gentry native to Staffordshire. So, all in all, a very beautiful, beautiful artefact. It is an absolute joy to work in this library. I hope you are enjoying these videos.